Welcome back to the Kernel Talk channel. In this video, I will show you side by side the differences between an old and a modern Casio G-Shock DW5600. Here they are, an old DW5600 from the 90s and a modern from the 2010s. And probably you are thinking that this is this looks like a clickbait video and yes, you are right, this is, but I will never bring you a clickbait without showing you really, really interesting stuff. So this, what you see here, probably you never saw before and you will see both by external and internal the differences between those two models. So the most obvious uh, differences is that the old one is entirely made of steel. Uh, both of them have the, the outer shield removed. Uh, actually, what happened is that this, this one got really, really worn out and I have to remove it. and. I actually got uh, an original one, but I never put it back again. And this one is also removed because it just to show you the construction of the case. So this is the the old one. I have this since it was new. I purchased it in 1996, if not mistaken. But it, it looks like it, it was sitting around the store for a couple of years. So it was probably made in 1992 three or 92 maybe these have a 901 module which is the second generation of modules of the dw5600 as you can see the case is really entirely made of steel uh, the parts that you see without the shield uh, it's better finish it uh, sorry about these scratches because you know i always try to to replace the battery way before I was a watch enthusiast so I screwed up a little bit while trying to replace the batteries I used this watch really intensively during my teenagers uh, on the mid uh, 90s and as you can see there is a little bit of a circular finishing and a polishing on the on the case back but the inside of the I mean the the part that is inside when you use uh, when the shield is on is is really not finished at all because this is actually a, a steel ring that is stamped straight away from from a model so uh, what you see here is really uh, the result of the stamping process you see those those scratches vertically this is actually the result of the the, the friction between the steel blank against the molds And you can see that the, the crystal is uh, is fixed with a plastic gasket that goes right here. And this one is from the 2010s. I purchased these in 2013. Uh, I choose this one with the inverted or negative LCD. And it uses the 3229 module and as you can see the case is made of plastic and the construction is really similar this one also uses a plastic uh, gasket to fix the the the, the crystal here and the construction is pretty similar but despite this, the the outer shield doesn't, you know, the, or the bezel, if you want to to call it like this, it doesn't fit one uh, or the other. It, they are not interchangeable. They look almost similar, but there is very small differences in size that doesn't let you fit uh, one with another. 
Another thing that you notice right away is that the case back on the plastic model uses uh, four screws to keep the case back in place while the, the steel one is a screwed in case back. And one thing that you probably might be asking is that which one is better or better, better constructed? And you know, I really don't think that the steel one is much better than the plastic one because, uh, you know, this plastic is really, really tough. Uh, I'm not even sure if the plastic one actually doesn't protect the movement better than the steel one. Because you will see uh, on the sequence of this video that inside they have a small rubber ring that keeps the movement in place. But that's the only thing that you know, keeps the, the shock from getting from the case to the movement. So I think that the, the steel one is probably more durable over time because I don't know what can happen to this plastic over the years, if it can get like crackly or something like that. But in terms of really, in terms of shock resistant, I don't really believe that the steel one is much more resistant than the the plastic one. And I even dare to, I don't know, maybe to think that the plastic one can resist more impacts or more severe impacts than the, the steel one, maybe, but I don't know, it's just a guess. And here are the two watches open. Uh, so as you can see here in the 901 module, you have this rubber disc that it acts like uh, isolation from the from the movement and the case back, and also as a kind of of a not also as a, a shock absorber, but also to to keep the the movement pressed in place. And you have these two rubber things as well that serves for the same purpose and here you see that the they have a rubber ring around the the battery uh, it helps the battery to to not move around in case of a shock and you will notice that both uses the same the same kind of battery it's a lithium 3 volt battery the model is a CR2016, which means that it have 20 millimeter in diameter with 1.6 millimeter in height. This is the the case back. The usually when you put off the case back, the 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 O ring. The gasket comes with the with the with the case back, but to mount it back, you have to put the the case back back on the on the case. As you can see, there is a little recess here where the 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 gasket goes. It goes uh, right here. You see, there is a this place here and this is the 3229 module it also have this rubber disc that say that serves for the same purpose which is to isolate the movement from the case back and also to keep the movement pressed back in place and it uses the same battery as I said and also the case back also have the o-ring you will notice that even though the the shape of the case back is not perfectly round but the the the, the gasket is uh i mentioned this because sometimes you will see watches that use case backs that are not perfectly round and the, the gasket actually have the same format the same shape of the of the case back but this is not the case the the, the gasket is also round and it also sits on the on the case on a special recess 
and then it is press, uh, pressed back to the case against the case when you close the case back. Uh, one very important difference that you will notice is that the 3229 have the the buzzer you know the, the this is the this is a, a small disc that makes the sound the beep beep sound for the alarm and other functions what you will notice is that to the 3229 the the buzzer is on the case back it's glued on the case back and that's why the movement has this small uh spring here to make the electric contact between the movement and the buzzer while on the 901 you don't have these this buzzer here the, the buzzer is part of the movement uh, the the sound is not so loud because the buzzer have to be small uh, but but it works the same way the difference is that there is a complication to use a buzzer on a screw down or screwing case back because uh, during the screening it, it we will scratch the the buzzer so that's why it, it it's possible to use but it's very rare to use buzzers on screw down case backs they usually separate from the case back with a, a another plate here but not glue it on the case back or either inside the movement and because of this if you try to to use the alarm if you if you use any any a function that uses the bus the buzzer you will notice that it will buzz even without the 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 case back but the 3229 will make no sound because uh, if it, if there is no contact between the buzzer and the movement it will produce no sound and here are both out of the case so as you can see here the steel case of the 901 inside you see that the pushers have a small C ring that you can uh, they save they, they serve as a clamp so if you need to remove the the pusher for lubricating and cleaning and replacing the gaskets you just remove this ring and the pusher comes out and the plastic case of the 3229 basically the same construction inside the pushers also use the searing so you can remove it if you need to and here the 901 module it have this this rubber spacer there that serves as a shock absorber and also to keep the movement in place so the movement is not loose like if you you have to knock it a little bit to get the the movement out of the case because this holds the movement in place and you can simply remove it You will notice here this small thing. This is a trimmer. This uh, this serves to set the the rate of the watch. If the watch is running fast or slow, you can just use a screwdriver to turn this for one one side of the other to change how the the circuit interprets the the signal from the quartz crystal so you can make the 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 rate goes faster or slower this is a this is very common on older circuits like this one uh, but it, it is not usual on more modern uh, movements where because modern movements movements they are more accurate so you don't need to 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 change the rate uh, or to adjust the rate they they came uh, pre-adjusted from the manufacturer and also in if you have a very accurate quartz watch like a thermal compensated movement like the a chronometer uh, you can actually adjust to the finest adjustment possible and it's done by inhibition you have to actually 
promote uh, some short circuits on the circuit to change the rate. There is there is a, a specific procedure to do this for each each movement, of, of course. And you will see that the 3229, it's it also have the rubber buffer here, and it serves for the same purpose. And actually, the construction of the module is quite similar. It, it's not supposed to be disassembled. It, it's supposed to be replaced. Uh, entirely if you have any problem you you can disassemble it especially the 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 901 it's it, it's more disassemblable let's say i don't know if this word exists but it's more disassemblable than the 3229 but still it, it was still supposed to be replaced in its entirety if we, if you have some some problems and that's it. Hope you like it. Hope you learned something new from this video. Hope you saw something that you never saw before in other places. And in case you didn't subscribe to the channel yet, please click on the subscribe button and keep following.